All right. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Let's stand and turn to hymn number two this morning. Glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to You may be seated. Good to see everybody in the house of God, another full house today. And we're so thankful for everyone being here uh, today. And we want to welcome those that's on Facebook uh, that uh, you'll get a blessing out of the services today. We're coming to you from sunny Florida in Melbourne, Florida, right across the street from the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know many of you all are going through some bad weather, but uh, we're praying for you all the time, and we hope that you can enjoy this service. And if you've never trusted Christ, we'd like to ask you to come to know Him as your personal Savior by just saying, I know I'm a sinner. I believe God loved me enough to die for me. I'm here by confessing my sins and asking Him to come into my heart and save me. That'll be a great thing. Mm -hmm. You can email us and tell us about it. We'd really be proud. Yes. Great to see everybody, though, in the audience today. We're, we have a full house and for which we are very thankful. God has really blessed us, and we're so glad that his blessings are upon us. Now, we're going to have regular services tonight, you know. We'll be here at 6 o'clock. We always have a prayer service and a praise service, and then the preaching of the Word of God. And so we're uh, looking forward to that already. And then, of course, you know, Wednesday night service will be at 6.30. And uh, I forgot that I was preaching on women of the Bible last week, mm -hmm. and... I remembered it now, so I'm going back <laughs> to the women of the Bible. We'll probably be preaching, I'm going to be preaching on Esther this time. And you know about Esther. She was a woman that was here in just in the time that God would have her to be here because there was a thing, something for her to do at that mm. time. And by the way, we're here for a certain time too, and God has something for us to do. So we need to be sure and be faithful uh, and tell others about Jesus Christ. 
So thank God for all of you that are here, and we're looking forward to a great service. We had a great Bible study this morning at 10 o'clock, and if you're in this area, and all of you, if you hadn't been coming to Bible study, I'd like to invite you to come. It's probably the most powerful hour in all of the week. So you ought to come if you possibly can. You'll be glad you did. We're studying the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and I know you'll enjoy that. And you'll see some things that maybe you have never seen before when you're just reading the Bible. All right, we're going to have another song now. All right, number 250. <coughs> Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today, leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary. I used to pastor Calvary Baptist Church, and I thought that meant it was happening in our church. <laughs> no, it's on the cross of Calvary. But anyway, it's, uh, it's about the same thing. You know, every time we meet, every Sunday morning at least, uh, we, have, we uh, receive an offering from God's people, and uh, we, we ask to, that you return to God a, just a portion. The Bible said to give a portion. The Bible said, give as you have prospered, as God has prospered you. <laughs> and so if God prospered you, then you give. If God didn't prosper, prosper you, you certainly don't have anything to give. But have you ever noticed that in the Bible, when you're reading the Bible, that God always wants the first fruits? He wants the first fruits. Mm -hmm. And uh, not the last thing, not the, you know, the dreads. He wants the first fruit, so uh, he asked us to give to him, and uh, and he doesn't care how much it is. He never said any place in the Bible or how much it was. It's not the size of your offering, but it's the, you know, the condition of your heart that Amen. God's interested in. Right. He loves a cheerful giver, That's right. and not a high roller. He said, "I love a cheerful giver," <laughs> so that's good. I like that. I'm glad he does because. I never have had a whole lot to give, but I've always been willing to give, and I know you have too, and God has blessed you for it, and he's Amen. blessed me for it, That's right. and I'm so thankful. You remember when he said, honor the Lord with thy substance, that's over here in Proverbs, uh, and, and, with, uh, and he said, I promise you that I'll open the windows, I'm quoting two or three scriptures here, but anyway, he said he had opened the windows of heaven in Malachi 3.10, and pour you out a blessing that you would be un able to, 
contain. Isn't that something? He said, I'm going to give uh, uh, you so much, you won't even have a place to put it. So, Brother Roberto is going to lead us in prayer, and then he's going to pass the plate. And let's pray. Dearly Father, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for all the people that are here this morning to worship you, Father, together um, as a family of Christ. God, I pray that you would be with this service, Lord. May everything that's said and done honor and glorify you, Father, and especially now as we get to bring to you a portion of all that you've given to us as an act of worship. We pray that you would use it, Lord, uh, so that this place may continue to be a beacon, Lord, of hope and uh, to teach your word, God. We love you. We thank you. We promise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. As Amen. The time has come to give thanks to Almighty God for the wondrous gifts that he imparts. Give him thanks for the love he showed us in giving us salvation through his Son, Jesus Christ. Give him thanks for someday meeting him in glory. Give him thanks for meeting every need. Give him honor by singing glory to his name in all things give thanks to our lord yeah all right thank you very much thank you very much god bless you for that and uh, brother tony is getting ready and he'll sing for us and then after that i'll preach the message <laughs>
Find right. somebody who sings something. Yes, it does. I like it. Well, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And I'm going to be preaching today on the blessings of justification. Justification uh, is, a, is a term that uh, means that you are saved uh, from your sins and the penalty of your sins and that you're on your way to heaven. And it's not something that a person can earn. Uh, it's something that is declared by Almighty God. He says, once we're saved, he says, you're justified. And a lot of preachers used to say that that means just as if you had never sinned. In other words, God has saved you from your sin and cast them as far as the east is from the west to remember them no more. Isn't that something? That God is that good to us. But in, in Romans chapter 5, he gives us uh, this, uh, situ this uh, of the, he tells us about the five blessings of being justified. You know, there's three, three of those. First of all, justification, that's salvation. And sanctification, that's growing in <laughs> grace. And you can do something about that, you know. More or less, you can uh, get in the Word of God, you can pray, and you can witness, and you can be faithful to the house of God, and all those things that would draw you closer to Him. And then there's glorification. And of course, that's one of these days when God takes us home to be with Him, to live eternally in, with Jesus Christ. And so we hopefully we've got justification, and hopefully we're working on the sanctification, and one day we'll realize the glorification when we go home to be with the Lord. I want to read the first 11 verses here. And uh, it's uh, the most important part of this is what the Bible says, not exactly what I say. He said, therefore, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope and of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Uh, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for us. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Those are some beautiful things that's mentioned right there in those 11 verses. And I want to talk about five of them, and there are five things that are, are said right here, uh, and talking about the things that are a blessing to those that have come to know Christ as their personal Savior. And they're all in this portion of Scripture. And so I want to read the first verse again because that's where I want to start. He said, therefore, being justified by faith. We're justified by faith. Our faith is not in our faith. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our, the object of our faith has to be the Lord Jesus Christ who died and shed his blood on Calvary that we might be saved. I remember my favorite verse in a, even in high school was, and uh, you know, John uh, 8, 12, uh, and he said, And I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so it's the job of the pastor or the Bible teacher to lift up Jesus Christ as the hope of the world. And we found it right here in this portion of Scripture. Therefore, being justified by faith in Christ, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the first benefit of uh, of being justified by faith is that we have peace, peace in our hearts. 
So many people, they said, I want, I'm looking for peace. And some people, when they, they use the term, I'm trying to find myself, they mean I want peace in my heart. Many, many people are in turmoil uh, who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, especially at this time when everybody's kind of staring death in the face because of this COVID-19, uh, that uh, there's no peace. But the truth of it is, if you're a born-again child of God, and you know Jesus Christ in your, as, as your Savior, well, then you can have peace in, mm -hmm. even at a difficult time. Because your hope is not in this world. It's not in the doctors. It's not in the medicine. It's in the Lord Jesus That's Christ. Right. We have <coughs> peace. And so uh, there was a time when we had enemies, you know. Over in Romans 5.10, it said, For if when we were, that we were enemies with God. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. There was a time when you and I were enemies with God. And you said, well, I, I didn't know that, but you, you, were, you were acting it out and didn't know what you was doing. Because every time you disobey God or turn your back on God or say that you don't believe in God, well, then you are an enemy of God. He's, you're not his enemy, but he's, a, he's your enemy because you don't want to follow his leadership. Peace with God means that our problem with sin has been settled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that be a good time for us to think about this? Do I have peace in my heart that I've been saved from the penalty of my sin and that I'm going to heaven when I leave this world? that I'm going to live abundantly for Christ while I'm here, and then I'm going to go home to be with Him. You know, I've got a, a funeral of a dear friend to preach this afternoon, and I've been thinking about some of this uh, today and yesterday as I was preparing the message that, you know, whenever you say, well, I'd like to go up in the rapture when every one of us goes up. Well, that'd be nice. You know, I mean, just whoop, go right on up. <laughs> But, you know, when you go up by yourself, uh, the Bible said that, I guess this is true about everybody, because remember when the rich, in the rich man and Lazarus, when Lazarus died, it said that the angels came and carried him to paradise. So look at it this way. If you die, uh, instead of going, to the, going in the rapture, if you die, the angels may come and get you and take you home to be with Him. Wouldn't that be something? Get a free angel ride to heaven by the grace of God. You can have Amen. peace in the midst of the storm. No doubt about it. That's right. and there's peace. And all you have right. to know uh, is that Jesus is there because Jesus Christ is going to take care of it. You know, God is our Father now. Once you've been saved, you think about this. God is not your judge anymore. He's your Father. He's mm -hmm. your own Father. Think about it. My Father is the Lord. And the Bible said there is, Therefore now, remember, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. You don't have to think about appearing before the Lord or before a judge and having Him say, Depart from me, you cursed no, we got peace in our heart because we know that we have been born again. Number two, we have access to God. I know that because we pray every, every Sunday night and Wednesday night in this church, I know that we know that we have access to God. But I wonder how many people out there uh, feels like they don't have any access to God. Some people think they have to get a hold of the preacher. Some people think they have to get a hold of a praying lady in the church or somebody. But you can actually go into the very throne room of God and yes. speak to Him yourself. Yes. You have as much authority to go before the Lord as I have or as anybody else has because you are a child of God. He said in verse 2 of Romans 5, 2, He said, By whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Before our salvation, we stood in Adam and we were condemned. After our salvation, we stand in Christ Jesus and we have a perfect standing therefore before God and we can actually enter into His presence. Back in the Old Testament, they couldn't do that. They would bring their offering to the priest 
and the priest would offer it to God. You and I don't have to do that. We've just experienced what we can do when we gave an offering to the Lord. And we can go right into the presence of the Lord because our standing is not just as a human being born of Adam, but it is standing as a spiritual being born in the likeness of Jesus Christ. And we have Christ in us. Over in Hebrews 10, I like what it says in 19 and 20 and 21 and 22, it said, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Never forget when you cross the threshold into the presence of God that you're there not because you're good or not because you've given a lot of money, but you're there because you've been washed in the blood of the Son of God, right. saved by grace. Right. When you get into heaven and you see the Father, you know that you fall down and say, I'm only here by the grace of God. The old preachers, when I was a kid, they used to pray. Instead of saying in Jesus' name, they'd say, for Jesus' sake. They thought, I'm coming to God because of what Jesus Christ is and for who Jesus Christ is and how that He died for me on Calvary. Thirdly, we have hope. You know, hope is not a weak word. A lot of times we think, oh, that's all I got left is hope. No, hope is something. You remember the second coming is called the blessed hope. It's something that's been established and that you're hanging on to it. This blessed hope. And he said in Romans 5, 2, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace when we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in hope. So we have hope. Literally, if you would translate that literally, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Ephesians 2, 11 and 12 says this, Wherefore remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the common wealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, having no hope, and without God in the world. That's where we were. If you were not saved, if you were not a born-again child of God, you had no hope. Even today, if there's someone here, somebody that's watching and listening around the world or across the United States, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't have a hope for the future. You're still under the judgment of God. You, 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 you need to come to know Christ. Everybody needs to come to know Jesus Christ because that's the only way you're going to have a hope uh, for, the, uh, for the future and for the glory of God. The unsaved, I said, are without hope. We cannot boast in good works to bring salvation, but we can boast in the wonderful grace of God. So when I say boast, I'm not talking about boasting about something that we've done. I'm talking about boasting about something that Jesus did for us when He died on that cross and shed His blood that we might have everlasting life. And here's number four. I said there's going to be five points. This is the fourth one. We have daily confidence. We have confidence to live each day. Did you know, uh, I, I, I heard this from a preacher and it reminded me that this is true, that every day we have this special privilege of being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Who are you really? And you say, well, really? I'm an ambassador for Christ. Yeah, I'm an ambassador for Christ. And he, he's put us in that position. So we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And we can live with confidence, uh, not only because we might have the United States government behind us, if we're an ambassador for the government or for the president, we have uh, the whole heaven and earth behind us because we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. You see what I mean? And verse 3 said this, and I'm in Romans 5, verse 3, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Woo, think about that also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, 
and patience, experience, and experience hope. One of the things that if you've ever been through any testing, you understand that if you get through it, <laughs> it's a blessing that is unbelievable on the other side. I mean, no matter what the problem is, maybe financially, you're down and out, and you don't have a thing, and all of a sudden uh, you get a great job, and, and, it, and sometimes it looks like you're desperate, you know, you lose your job, especially this day and time, and then you say, I've hunted for a job for a year, and I still don't have a job. And then finally you get a call, and somebody says, I want you to come in for an interview, and you're able to go in, and you get a job, and you're so happy you can't hardly stand it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you're so happy. It, because you've gone through that testing, and you were able to go through that testing uh, with confidence, uh, because we know that tribulation works patience or experience, and experience brings hope. Because, see, you've been through that experience, and now then it's given you hope because you came through it. So experience is a great thing. You know, that's a great teacher, probably the best teacher. You know, common sense is probably the, the best knowledge that anybody's ever had. You can be the right. smartest person in the world and don't have enough sense, you know, to stay out of the middle road when an 18 wheeler's coming. You know, you've got to have common sense. Right. But, and so that comes from experience. Mm -hmm. And experience will give you hope. If you've been through financial problems and, and made it, if you've been through uh, physical problems like cancer -hoo -hoo, or something like that, and you made it, whoo, that, uh, that experience really helped you. And you say, you know, I said, we, we was thinking about that this morning on the way over here. Kind of funny when you think about things. But I was thinking about how long I have been cancer free. And it's been uh, 25 years or 26 years cancer free. So consequently, when, when somebody has cancer, and I know a lot of people, other people have, when you have cancer and you're discouraged and you're downhearted and you don't know what in the world uh, is going to happen to you, I, I say, you know, I had cancer and I made it through. And that was 25 years ago. Yeah. I mean, that, that experience gives you hope, not only for yourself, but for somebody else. Right. Say, so, hey, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. And so we glory in testing because we know uh, that uh, uh, the f in, in the future, uh, confidence in the present trials of life helps us more than anything else. The formula looks like this. Now here it is. Testing plus Christ equals patience. And patience plus Christ equals experience. And experience plus Christ equals hope. Now that's how you put it in a in a sentence, and that's just the legalese of it, but that's true. We do not glory over trials or about trials, but we glory in trials. Mm. That's not easy, but we can glory in trials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.4 says, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. And then James, you know, he was pretty tough, but he put her plain, you know, when he said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yeah. You know, you, if you never were tried... You never would know what a blessing it is to go through trying and testing. Mm. What a blessing it is. Mm. It's something that's unbelievable. And then lastly, here's the last thing, fifth one. We experience the love of God. Think about that. God loves you. Mm. Yeah, He loves everybody. But don't you know He loves His own really a whole lot more? <laughs> you know, it's just natural for God to say, you know, I love you. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're my child. If, it's, if my mother was up in, she's in heaven, not if she was, my mother up in heaven, if she were to look down, uh, she'd look at this whole crowd here, and you know who would be her favorite? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? I'm her son. Amen. <clears throat> that's the truth. And that's the way Jesus mm -hmm. is. God is. When he looks down upon us, he's so proud because he says, this is my child. 
This is my child. Think about it. So you, you have the love of God. I like what he said about the love of God. He said in verse 5, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So I mean, woo! We're just full of it. The love of God. Right. It's shed abroad in our hearts. Oh, mm. woo! We're just... Love uh, ought to be the point of our life. And we didn't even know how to love before we met the Lord Jesus Christ and were saved. And then God showed us what it means to love. He, and I think that's true about everything that we do. We ought to live in the presence of God. Uh, when we give, we ought to give the best. Uh, I'm not talking about just the church, but like for instance, if you give to the Goodwill or to the CITA mission we got here, uh, maybe you ought to give them your best dress or your best suit mm. instead of something you don't wear. And if you're giving food to people, give them something that you would eat. You know, I mean, I get some of that food, you know, that's been given. I've been getting that kind of food. I wasn't poor, but I took the poor. Sometimes I would take the poor to where they would get the uh, food and back in the olden days all you got was cheese and peanut butter and canned meat stuff like that wasn't hard at fit to eat but uh, nowadays you get about the same thing <laughs> and you say well I wouldn't buy this stuff for myself I wouldn't buy this for myself but they they have a surplus so they're giving it to the poor I think if you if they have a, a, a uh, this is I, I mean I'm having to preach to myself I guess because I tell you what, if they're going to have a food drive, don't give them something you wouldn't eat. Like, you know, you say, well, I don't want these greens. I don't want these carrots. I sure don't like these yams. I'm going to give them to them. No! Give them something good. Green beans, a whole kernel of corn, English peas, whatever you like. Pinto beans. Give them to the poor. Wouldn't that be good? That's what, we've got the example that God gave the best that he had for us. Mm. So we are to give. We learn to love. God revealed his love at the cross, by the way. And I've said that before. And if God did all this for us while we were sinners and his enemies, that's what he said. He said for in verse 6, look at that one. He said, for when, he, when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 7, For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man some might die. But God, but God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are saved by Christ's death, but we're also saved by his life. You know, he was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He died a sacrificial death. He arose triumphant over death in the grave and ascended into heaven and he's sitting there at the right hand of God. The Bible says making intercession for us right now. Think about during this church service and across the country and around the world while you're listening to this message, the Lord is making intercession for you. Jesus is praying the Father. I hope each one of these who hear this message will take it to heart and if they're not saved while they're still an enemy of God, if they'll come to Christ, they can be saved eternally. He said this in verse 9 and 10. Look at that. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. I think that's what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said in Galatians 2, 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's, that's how we live after we're born again. Our life is lived for Christ. Mm. Put Christ first in your life. You know, you say, well, uh, uh, what, what is the thing that you like most? And you say, I love the Lord. I love the Bible. I love church. 
And I know you like your, your children and your wife and your husband, but I'm talking about spiritually speaking. We have received reconciliation, and now the love of God is experienced in our lives, according to verse 11. Look at verse 11. He said, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have now, by now, by whom now, we have now received. I can't read that very good. Can I read that again? Verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that something? Isn't that wonderful? We have received this reconciliation. And now the love of God is experienced in our lives. It happens. I mean, it was just like if this book was written by an attorney and he was just setting forth case after case after case and he said, if this happens, this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and the result is we're saved, we're going to miss hell, we get to go to heaven, and while we're here, we get to live for Jesus Christ. That's right. If you've never been saved, you need to come to Him and be saved. If you're not living for Him, you need to rededic rededicate your life to Him. If you're not faithfully serving Him, you need to begin to serve Him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Mm.